You are now listening to the Vitalize Podcast. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, what up, family? Uh, welcome back to the Vitalize Podcast. You are here with your friendly neighborhood host, Mr. Marcus Black, and I got somebody so, so, so powerful in a building a day. Listen, if you don't know because somehow you've been sleep under a rock somewhere, you're going to learn today. And uh, this is a person that I'm proud to introduce to you, man. Some of you guys like to watch movies. You know what I'm saying? You got these superheroes. You know, I got, I know some of y'all some Batman fans. You will fight somebody over Batman. You know, some of y'all Superman fans, you'll fight somebody over Superman, Iron Man, all the mans, right? And because those guys represent strength they represent character resilience overcoming power in the world and so i don't knock you for celebrating your heroes <laughs> uh, but the person that i'm bringing on the podcast today is, is my hero uh, is a person who saw something in me before i saw something in myself he is a legend and he'll tell you what that means in his own words he is a multiple time best-selling author he is one of the greatest minds orators communicators in the history of the world and i said what i said i stand on it and the biggest and best part about it is he don't even have to tell you that you can check his footwork you can check his track record it speaks for itself and it is my privilege and pleasure to introduce to you my brother my friend none on um, none other than the legend himself Mr. Trent Shelton, what up, family? How you doing today, man? What up, man? Hey, I'm I'm taking an intro, bro. I'm putting that on my speaker reel. <laughs> so I, I need I, I need that, man. I appreciate you, man. Uh, so proud of you, and uh, I'm just glad that I'm here, man. Because I always know our conversations are legendary, bro. So thank you for having me, man. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. So you don't even know this. I didn't tell you this, but on episode one of this season, I ran a poll and I asked the community. If there was anybody you could have on the show, who would it be? And your name was by far, like 90%, the most requested human being to come back on the show. So I'm so glad we got you here today. man, this is what I want to do today, because we got something real big, real exciting to talk about. And I need y'all to get ready with anticipation, because I know you're going to leave better than you came. We ain't ever going to waste your time. And you're going to be able to take something and actually go and grab something tangible that will change and revolutionize your life. I stand on it. So before we do that, I just want to say, in the Bible, and I know we all believe differently, that's cool, but in the Bible, there are these stories in the beginning of the New Testament, and they're called Gospels. And that word is fancy. It just means good news. So in there, when you check this out, what you see is, okay, there's Matthew, there's Mark, there's Luke, and they all read differently. And there's John. Matthew and Mark is like, yo, let me tell you about my hero. Let me tell you about the champion. Let me tell you about my savior. Let me tell you about my Lord. Let me tell you how he, all, he out here getting it done, right? But then there's John, and his book doesn't read like the others. John says, yeah, they're going to tell you about their savior. They're going to tell you about the Lord. They're going to tell you about the Messiah, the chosen one. John said, let me tell you about my friend. And my hope today is, Trent is a hero for all of us. I already know that. And he's a legend because of what he's done and what he's proven in the world. But I hope to be able to introduce to you the man behind the legend. And you get to hear a piece of his heart and that you get to really see him. Because you know that he's done a lot of incredible things. But I want you to understand why. Because this is real. This ain't for play play. This is not a facade. So that being said, I want to talk to you today, man, about this project. And you literally dropping today. Like, you can go grab it right now. You can go. And I'm going to put the link here and make it easy for you. You can go grab this book. And you wrote a book, man. It's called Protect Your Peace, man. Tell us about it, man. Tell us about the project. Yeah, man. It's right here, man. And, um, it's uh, It's everything to me. You know, it, it's so hard to put into words because literally those words are a lifestyle. And I see the world now, like, and I'm happy. Like, the world now is talking about protect your peace. It's something I decided in 2009, and it became really real for me in 2016 when I went through a tough moment in my life. And the ironic thing about this book, and I wouldn't say ironic, but the congruency is that, like, as I was writing this book, <laughs> I was going through one of the toughest times in my life when it came to protecting my peace. And so, you know, you can write a book from 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 wisdom. You can write a book 
from experience. And this book was written in both, like the wisdom of me knowing protect your pieces, being my lifestyle, and also the experience of me actually going through that season of where I'm like, okay, I got to really apply these principles or what do I need to know in order to protect my peace even more during the season? So this book is going to help people holistically. It's not just a keep people out your life book. It's a book of mindset. It's a book of soul. It's a book of energy. So the three things you're going to learn is how to protect your energy, how to protect your mind, how to protect your soul, which equals how to protect your life. So when you pick up this book, you're going to get a holistic approach on how to live your life. Sheesh. It doesn't get better than that. And I know you're a person who is really big on practicing what you actually preach. So like you said, this is birthed out of lived experience. But you say it in yourself in the subtitle, you're given nine unapologetic principles to help people thrive in a chaotic world. I want to talk about that a little bit. And I really want to break down that subtitle because every word means something. And that's intentional. Yeah. So the first word before we even get into just chatting is unapologetic because there's a lot of people who yeah. do things, but they do it and they apologize. I'm sorry. And um, I don't mean no harm, but when you say apologetic, what does that really mean? Why do they got to be unapologetic in their pursuit of peace? Because they're not sorry people. And I think we are too good at always saying we're sorry. We're always, like you said, tiptoeing. We're always uh, being timid and going to live our best life. And why should you be timid and living your best life? What are you doing wrong? What are you doing wrong with growing your life, changing your life? What are you doing wrong with setting a boundary and getting fed up with certain things that don't deserve your energy no more? Like, what's wrong with that? So I want to make, I want to give people permission to walk into their greatness. I want to, to give people permission to walk into their boldness. I want to give people permission to walk into their courage and say, hey, listen, like one of the principles here was know your worth. That's what it was. And I said, no, unapologetically, demand your worth. And I want to bring that energy to, to, to the world through this book because I want people to walk in their highest self and live unapologetic this year. Don't be sorry for doing what's best for you. Don't be sorry for leaving things behind. Don't be sorry for trusting your vision. Like the world needs that. So I want to give them that energy, man, and give them permission to go live their best life. Stop asking the world for permission to shine your light and to be your great. You literally have the power, man. So what y'all waiting on? Listen, I love that. When I saw that, it really hit me because I walked around the world like that with my shoulders droop, like, I'm sorry if I'm intruding on your space or I'm sorry if, man, get out of here with that. Like, I love the energy of like, you are one of one. You are such a unique, such an incredible gift in the world. And you got to be unapologetic about who you are and what you want. Because if you don't, you'll never get what you want. And I love that you bringing this to light, bro. And we're really talking about it, right? So as I think about this subtitle, the next thing that jumps out to me is we're talking about thriving, right? And yeah. a lot of people see that and you are the king of like, let me show you how I'm, I'm personal experience. Like my relationship, I told y'all this was my hero, but the reason why is because he showed me the way he took me under his wing. He taught me and showed me, he modeled it. He lived it. He breathed it and challenged me. And so when I think about this, I'm like, nobody lives this more than you. So thriving is something that happens as a result of action you put in and you live that. Now, there's a lot of people who say that sounds good for y'all or it must be easy. Oh, let's deal with that. It must be easy for a former NFL player. Cut it, cut it. So what do you say to the people who say it's easy for you to say and talk about thriving as a person who was in the NFL? Yeah, um, you know, I'm gonna be real with you, Marcus, and I've never said this. Like, I take that as a compliment, and I'll tell you why. I take it as a compliment because there was a time in my journey where I wanted to get to a place where people thought it was easy because of all the work that I put in. People thought I was lucky because of all the work that I put in. So, what you didn't see, you didn't see the last 15 years. What you didn't see, you didn't see my rock bottom. You didn't see the place where I thought my life was over, and I was met with a decision to either end my life or go live my best life. And I made a choice without no evidence of external evidence of this is going to work without any support from outside people, except a few, but I made a choice at my rock bottom to go live my best life unapologetically. So yeah, you might say it's easy because you're looking at me now in a routine. You're looking at me now thriving, but it was a point where it wasn't easy. It was a point where I was surviving. And some of you listening to this right now, you're at that place where you're just surviving. I get it. 
right? Barely making ends meet. You're trying to figure these things out. You're treading water. I get it. But at some point, you're going to move from surviving to thriving. And it takes actionable steps. It takes you stop giving the excuse of saying like, oh, it must be easy. But that's a prison perspective. It's a prison mindset. It's you deflecting. And so instead of saying, oh, it must be easy for you. Say, oh, man, how did you get to the point where you make it easy, where you make it look easy? And those are the questions that you need to ask yourself because that's going to serve your growth. It's going to serve your soul. It's going to serve your progression. But as long as you're, is what I call the BC mindset, blaming and complaining and you're feeling sorry for yourself and you're deflecting all this negative energy on everybody else by saying, oh, well, it's because he made, he was in the NFL or it's because, you know, they had their trust fund baby. It's because this is because that. Forget what is because for them. I want you to think about your life and what is it going to be for you? Because at the end of the day, it can be true. It cannot be true for them. But what's true for you? And the truth is, if you don't take ownership, your life is not going to look any different. So that's what I would tell people. Sheesh. <laughs> hey, man, I'm like you, man. You got to let it breathe, man. He come in. I, I told, I, I, I'm unapologetic, bro. I'm, un, I'm, in, I, I'm in my unapologetic season. And I love it because you earn that. And I always talk about this James Baldwin quote I heard, and it really helped me. And he said, it took me many years of vomiting up all the filth that I had been taught about myself and even half began to believe before I was able to walk about this earth as though I have a right to be here. And so many people walk around like, I don't mean to intrude and I'm sorry. And I'm like, I hope that those of you already, I know your interest is peaked. Some of y'all done already went in order to shout out to you because that's the action takers in the world. And those are the people who reap the benefit of the principles that are being taught. Right. So shout out to you, bro, because like modeling that, it's just been pivotal in my own life. So I think about these other people, right? So we deal with that person, but the concept of thriving, there's some people who just don't think like, it doesn't matter what I do, it's not possible for me. I can't tell you, even when I watch your lives, when I go live, when I'm talking to people, I see so many people who are just like, I don't think thriving is even possible for me. They are so consumed and clouded by what's happening in the world, which that's going to segue right into my next point. But what's, what do you say to the people who feel like, man, I don't even know if thriving is possible for me. Go find out. If it's not possible, go find out, go see, go try, you know, prove yourself wrong or right, but go try, go try. You know, that's the thing. I don't know what is possible for your life. I don't know what God has for your life. I do know he has something better for your life. I do know he has something greater for your life. So I'm going to tell you to go find out. And spoiler alert, when you go find out, you're going to realize I can thrive. But you got to go find out because as long as you're sitting in the bleachers, allowing your, uh, you're creating an experience that you never experienced yet. Like you're telling yourself what it's going to be before you ever experience it. So you're defeating yourself before you ever step into the ring. Don't do that. Step into the ring. If you get your butt kicked, you get your butt kicked. But I'll guarantee when you get your butt kicked in the ring, you're going to realize, like, I'm stronger than what I think. Like, I got something here. And you're going to get back up. There's plenty of times I got my butt kicked thinking that, man, can I actually do this? And no, I didn't succeed at it at first, but it gave me the confidence to say, wait a minute. If I figure some things out, like, I got more capabilities than what I think. So you can't just sit on the bench and expect to win the game. Get in the game. Go find out. <laughs> you can figure something wrong. My man said, you will never win a game that you are not willing to play. You got to get in the Try game it. in order to see if you can win. So the next, that segues right perfectly into this point. And it's the last part of the subtitle that I think about. And you talk about the chaos of the world that we live in. Yeah. And right now, bro, the world is hurting, man. The world is hurting in the worst way. That's this. I believe wholeheartedly this book is an antidote. It's an antidote, bro. This is medicine. This is a solution. This is what people need to take. You can go take a lot of stuff for your pain and you can go take a lot of stuff for that chaos you feel, that depression and that anxiety. But I believe if you take this, if you go and get you a dose of what my man is putting down here, you can illuminate light in your life and you can overcome the chaos in the world. So when you think of the state of the world, what type of chaos do you see and what? how did that inspire and influence you to, to create this work? That's a great question. You know, I think the chaos, I mean, it's a lot of chaos, but the chaos that I, that I see just from, I think the world that we live in is a lot of information and opinions. You know, we, everybody has a microphone. Everybody has a microphone. Anybody can say what they want to say these days. And I think 
that's a lot of chaos, especially if you're trying to start something or do something or become something. You're going to get voices. You're going to get people putting their two cents, you know, into your life and into what you do. And so that's a lot of chaos. A lot of chaos is people don't understand your vision, understand what you're trying to do, even if it's your family and friends. And so there's a lot of worldly chaos, but I specifically in this book am talking about the outside noise that's trying to kill your inner calm. And so peace, this is the thing, Marcus, people have to understand, peace isn't some magic like potion to end the chaos. <laughs> like the chaos is still going to be there. You know, chaos is around my life every single day. People are in my comments a lot. People are in my inbox. I saw a post the other day where some lady was talking about some crazy, right? And I can't control what people say. I can't control even what people do, but I can control how that affects me. So P says, yes, we can't control the chaos around us, but we can control the chaos from killing the calm inside of us. And so in this book, these are the tools to control your internal, because if you have conversations with people, you know this, bro, most people's problems, I would say 99% of people's problems, it's tied to something externally. It's tied to something outside of how people feel about them, a relationship or a job, this or this. And so how can we somehow have this filter, have this safeguard on our soul and our life to not allow these wars outside of us to start a war within, to start a war inside of us. And so this book is taking people on that journey to help you uh, be able to defeat those external battles because you realize it's really an internal one. Some can't control you without your permission. Some can't bother you without your permission. Something can't take away your peace unless you give it away. <laughs> this is so powerful, man. And as I'm thinking, I'm like, why do you think so many people give away their peace? Because I feel like we do. We be just giving it away. Why do you feel like so many people give away their peace so easily? So I, I think there's different levels of that. I think one person or a group of people, they're professional people pleasers, as I call triple P's, right? Is that they want to please everybody. And I think the root of that is that they want to be needed. You know, some of our ego is tied to need, right? If people don't need me, then I don't feel valuable. And so it's crazy. We'll lose ourselves trying to please other people. So I think one area that is, you know, people being people pleasers. And I've been guilty of that. Sometimes I'm still a people pleaser and I'm always trying to check myself and fix that. And I think the other thing is we don't understand how valuable our peace is. Like we don't really know our worth. People say, I know myself, I know my worth. But I would just ask the listener to this. Think about your last week. Think about your past relationships. Think about maybe even yesterday. And can you really say you know your worth? Did you give your worth away? Did you allow a stranger online to control how you feel about yourself? Because when you know the value of something, Marcus, like if I was to come to you and say, hey, bro, um, give me your car for, uh, I'm going I'm to buy your car for $10. You would look at me like you was crazy. Like, what? My car is worth this. And we do that with our life so much, right? We allow our life to be cheapened so much. We allow our soul to be cheapened so much. We, As I call in the book, <laughs> peace stealers and peace thieves to take our peace for little of nothing. And so it's a famous quote, it's not mine, but if it's costing your peace, it's too expensive. And the thing about it, we haven't put a price on our peace and really it's priceless, but we haven't put a price on our peace. And so we give it away so freely. And then what happens is we have no peace inside of ourselves, And then we blame the person, we blame the situation, how they're not good and this and that. When they showed you that, it's just that you haven't put a, a true value on your worth. And so when I say demand your worth in principle three, that's why I say it. Yes, somebody might say, Trent, you charge too much as a speaker. Okay, I charge too much for you because I know people who pay me my price and I know the work that I put in. Some people might say, oh man, you know what, Trent? Uh, that's just, you, you charge too much for your shirts. Okay, cool. I respect your perspective, but I know people who buy my merchandise and say, actually, I need to charge more. I, I don't charge enough. And so what I look at is me knowing my worth, me understanding my worth, and I'm not going to put a a false worth on myself, me being something I'm not, me thinking I'm more than what I am, but I know what I've been through. I know what I survived through. I know what I overcame. And I refuse to allow somebody who won't even say a prayer for me, somebody who won't even show up at my funeral, somebody who don't really care about me to determine how much I'm worth. Child, please. <laughs> they don't even know you. They don't. But they got they might have knew you, but they don't know you. 
Oh, okay, okay. All right, man. Now you come on, man. Okay, so if y'all, if you haven't, let me tell you right now. Do yourself a favor, and you gotta go search wherever you listen to your podcast and look up the Straight Up Podcast with Trent Shelton. Do yourself a favor. You're welcome. If you're, some of y'all, a lot of y'all already are, but if you haven't, go do it now. Right? Um, you gave us a gift just the other episode where you really read some of the book to us. Yeah. And I I was sitting here like, dang, I was just like, you said how I'm yelling right now. That's how I was when I was <laughs> listening um, to you talk about that. And you, you brought out some principles, right? And you just alluded to one of them, right? You, you just said it, but you said so much in that chapter. And I really want to talk about it. Number one, thank you for the gift and giving that to us and caring so much to kind of wet our appetites and let us see it. But one of the things you talked about, and this is a mantra, a mantra, a mindset that I'm getting in myself this year, too, is you said less announcements, more achievements. Like, what does that mean when you say less announcements, more achievements? What are we on this year? Tell the community what we on. Yeah, I think um, sometimes we're too guilty. And I've been here, too. But we, we, we talk about it. Right. And listen, I understand of speaking it to existence. I understand of saying it. But you got to watch out. Well, Lil Wayne said, uh, Please don't shoot me down. That's all about his dreams. And it's the same thing. Like a lot of times, man, when we speak and when we say it, for one, we give people something to aim at, right? We give people something to shoot down. Like when you're telling your dreams to the world and nothing wrong with that, because you can stand on that regardless. There's times where I'm like, this is my year. I'm doing this. Nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the day, one of the things that I've always kind of been locked into, I've always said, man, I want people to ask me how I did it. Not me tell people what I'm about to do. So I want to get to a place because I know if I'm, if people are asking me how I did it, then I did it. Right? I did it. And so I've always been on that mindset to get to a place like, bro, how did you do this? How did you do that? Not in a place of like, I'm going to do this and I never go do it because then it makes you look like, I'm going to use the word fraud. It's such a strong word because I've been there a lot of times in my life, but it makes you look like you ain't about your business. It makes you look like you just talk about things that you're not going to follow through on. So I've always said to protect me, it's like, you know what? There's some things that I want to do, but I know I probably won't stick to it. So I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm just going to be like, okay, cool. The things that I want to do and I actually get accomplished, it'll get to a point where people say, man, Trent, how did you do that? How'd you make that happen? And that's always been my goal to get to that place. Well, you did it. You you have done it. I know when I was combing through the world looking for the leaders, looking for the thought leaders, looking for the people who were doing it, how I want to do it. You were at the top of that list, bro. It was like, I have to figure out how I can learn from this man. Cause like goaded from a, not only are you preaching it, I'm practicing it, I'm living it. And I'm doing this with my whole heart. I'm doing this from a heart center place. I'm not out here selling you no pipe dreams. I want you to know what's real because if you're willing to put in the work and you, you have done that, bro. And I know I'm gonna tell on myself right here. I, uh, when I was listening to that, you know, I've been guilty of that. You know, I was guilty of that in the beginning. And my wife had to tell me to shut up. Don't don't you say, don't you tell another soul you writing a book. In these 10 years, you got less than one chapter. And you've been telling people for 10 years, I don't want to hear it until you do something. It hurt my little feelings. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but two months later, I had a manuscript done and ready. You ready to be there sold. You go. Um, and, and this is another one telling on myself. How, how long? How many years have I been telling you? I'm about to get my health, man. I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to. <laughs> and uh, I haven't said a lot this year so far, but I'm down 33 pounds and counting. And this is the most consistent I've been. And it's not a game. So that's the mantra for this year, man. Less announcements and more achievements. Watch, we going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Proud um, of you, bro. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, another thing you mentioned was you talked about too close bias. And uh, I've actually seen an exercise you do in your live experience where you even illustrate what that looks like. But a lot of people, and this ties into everything you already been saying and why this book is so, this is an inner healing book. Like peace starts inside out. It starts sure. by silencing what's on the outside and focusing on what you have on the inside and learning to appreciate that, have gratitude for that and protect that sacredly. And you are the epitome of that, right? But so much of the noise comes from things we can't control, external factors, but people who are closest to us. 
from our family, from our best friends. And why don't they support me? Why don't they see it? Why don't they see my vision? Why don't they, why? I, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. And the people who supposed to believe in me don't, and I'm hurt. So maybe I should just throw in the towel because they don't believe in me. Like, let's unpack that a little bit. Yeah, man, too close bias is one of my favorite things to talk about because I see so many people not go after what's in their heart to go achieve and accomplish because of that. Because like, let's be real. Like when something happens like great, or we have a great idea, we're going to go to proximity, like meaning that whatever's around us and we're going to go to familiarity, like people that we love and we care about. And I want to say this off top. It doesn't make them bad people. It doesn't make them, you know, haters or anything like that. Like you might have people in your family or friends that actually are, but just because they don't understand your vision, doesn't make them that. So I do want to say that because we're too quick to throw people as the hater title or they don't, but they're not meant to understand it. And so the thing I talk about and I illustrate often is like when you're so close to something, you can't see it. Like it takes you walking back for you to be able to say, oh, this is what it is. And so with your family, with your friends, you have to understand this truth. You become desensitized to what you're familiar with. Like, think about it. Think about something that you've had in your life for a long time. I was talking to one of my friends that lives in Puerto Rico. And I'm like, bro, you got to, like, this is amazing to wake up to this. He's like, what? It's like, all right. Like, it's just the beach. <laughs> She's like, oh, you've been here too long. And if you, the house that you live in, the cars you have, like, once you're in something for so long, you get used to it. That's how the human brain works. So when it comes to you, you got to realize your mom, your dad, your friends, your family, people you knew in high school, they knew you. They, they knew you for who they always saw, saw that you were. Right. Who you may have even been beneficial to them or you're just little Trent, little Marcus. That's my cousin or these things. So a lot of people think that greatness is something that is. Not familiar, it's a stranger. It's what we see on TV. We've been programmed since we're a little to idolize celebrities and TV superstars. And before social media, you know, what I mean, like it was kind of like a mystique because you didn't get to run into these people. You didn't get to see these people like every day on their lives or what they post. So it's always like, oh, to be a someone of greatness, to be a legend, it can't be around me. And I'll even take it this, like that says a lot about them because most people don't think greatness can be around them. So it's no way you can be great because no way greatness will be around me. And so you have to realize that. So what you have to do, and I'll keep this short and sweet, is that you have to give your greatness to the world. There's a, fam there's a well, I'll say famous quote, but it's my quote, and people love it. And I love it too. Is that you know God will place strangers in your life to take you to higher places. So don't be surprised if your support doesn't come from familiar faces. And it's true. If you're going to be successful in anything, like Marcus, you can answer this. Your podcast, and if, even if all your family has listened to your podcast and supports it, is your podcast made more of people you don't know or people that you do know? 93% people I do not know that I've never met a day in my life. And that's what success takes. You talk to the Chick-fil-A guy, he's going to tell you, yeah, probably 99.9%. I don't know the people who are buying my sandwiches. And so when you look at it like, when you look at it like this, yes, you want their support. It'd be dope that you have it. But if you're going to build anything legendary and successful, it takes strangers to make that happen. Bro, you told me that in the beginning. And I, I'm not even going to lie, bro. When you were saying it, I was like, I couldn't see it. And then I saw it because when I started yeah. putting it out there, I started noticing who was sharing and who was like pushing it everywhere. And so I'm like, dang, bro, this ain't, I don't even know these people. The people I know, they ain't even like it. Yeah, that takes <laughs> no effort. They ain't even like the post, let alone share it and push it. So, it, and if you guys can really turn, I hope you're internalizing this. It's like, not that they don't want to see you win. They just can't see the full vision or the how big it is and you said this like you can't even fully see how big it is and you said that in your own journey like i couldn't even fully see how it was going to work out and it was really big so you can't expect that from them so stop allowing that to stop you from showing up in the world man cut it out we ain't doing that so i, I got just a couple questions and I, i'll get you out of here man as i start to now you know segue into like the man behind this you guys have heard the principles in the book. That's enough 
for you to whet your appetite for you to go get this. I guarantee you, I stamp it. It's going to change your life. Next, Also, I got five of them coming my way as well uh, that I personally bought, and I'm going to go see my mans and get them to sign them. So I'm going to tell you all how I'm going to just give them away and how I'm going to choose to give them away. You just got to follow Trent, follow me, subscribe to his podcast, subscribe to my podcast, and I'm going to just pick five of y'all and, and give them away to you. Uh, so you've already heard the things that I know will make you want this and see and, and crave that inner peace that you are being robbed of because you've been in a war with yourself. Let's deal with that before I give you these last two questions. Like so many people yeah. are in a war with themselves, sometimes even self self sabotaging themselves, tearing yourself down. Like you picking yourself apart. You made a spoken word about other people picking you apart, but sometimes you're trying to beat them to the punch. <laughs> yep. Like, let's talk about like why, how, what advice do you give to the people to stop picking yourself apart and tearing yourself down, trying to beat them people to the punch? I mean, the world is already going to do it for you. Like, why give the world a helping hand? And, you know, it takes a lot of healing, a lot of um, dealing with your past traumas. You know, it takes the inner work. I think Big Sean said it, and I love his, his line. He said, uh, the, 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 what he said, the hardest working on yourself is the best work that you never get paid for, something like that. And I love it because it's true. Like, I definitely think it can be something you get paid for later on as you continue to heal and work. But, like, it's so hard sometimes to face ourselves. And so I have this rule of self-worth, um, this self-worth commandment. And I live by it, bro. And it's, number one, thou shall not be my own enemy. And I tell myself that every single day because in my mind, I often want to be my own enemy. Right. This mind of mind, the greatest war we ever going to face is not an external one. It's an internal one. It's here. It's between these two ears. And it's like, am I enough? Do people still love me? Are people tired of me? Like, these are things that I think about. Like, do I still have the creative juices? Am I still making an impact? Like all these questions. And you have to be able to have, I talk about this in the book, actually, a disruptor. A disruptor is something that disrupts, right? Disrupts that flow of thought. And so Instead of me saying, man, am, am I still, am I still? No, boom. I am making an impact. I am creative. I am full of work, right? And I start telling myself the I am's. And I know it seems silly to some people like, oh, that's so positive and affirmations. What's the alternative? To speak deaf into your life? Like, what's the alternative? When, you know, I, I said this on stage last, like it was last week and I said it on stage, somebody was like, train you too positive. What's the alternative? To be negative? You know what I mean? Because I know where that leads. Like, so I just, even if me being positive don't change anything, but it changes my attitude. And I talked about this on the podcast last week, Marcus, like, or this week, just recently. Like, there's some things that take no talent for you to change your life. No talent. And one of them is your attitude. And if you can't have a great attitude towards life, as they say, attitude determines your altitude. It's a cute quote, but it's true. If you can't control your attitude. It's always, oh man, it's everybody else's fault and life sucks. Guess what? Life is going to give you that. And it takes no talent. So some of these things that you're trying to accomplish, it takes talent. It takes work. But if you can't do the things that take no talent, then how can you really change your life? And so I would tell the listener, like, ask yourself, how are you being your own enemy? And then how can you put something in place to make sure that you're not your own enemy no more. What's going to be a disruptor that you go to when that flow of thought of negativity is coming, that you stop it and you shift your perspective to your power and to something that's positive? It's so powerful, man. And uh, I love how consistent your messaging has been congruent from day one. Like, I know that you bleed this stuff. And if, if more people would just pick it up, if you just ingest it, like, matter of fact, the great popular legend, you know what I'm saying? Pop music icon uh, who is no longer with us. Rest in peace. Uh, Michael Jackson once said, heal the world. Let's figure out how we can make this world a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There's people dying every single day, but if we cared enough for the living, we can make this a better place for you and for me. When I think of healing and what healing the world looks like, this is where it starts. You are teaching in these nine principles how to heal the world by first healing the inner world, healing, healing me and my world from the inside out and helping people go. So why is that important? Why is healing important to you? Why is helping people heal themselves to leave this world better important to you? 
man, and I want to, while we on MJ, he also said it starts with the man in the mirror and the woman in the mirror. You know what I mean? Like that all starts with you was, was probably inspired by a little bit of MJ. And that's even as, as a side note, like on healing yourself, like this is kind of the geeky side of me. It's like the things that you listen to, like what you're feeding your soul. You know what I mean? Like if you're listening to heal the world, you're going to feel better. I promise you. You're going to feel like I want to go heal the world. If you listen to man in the mirror, whatever it is for you, healing frequencies. I've been, somebody asked me the other day, like, what's a habit that you're starting to tap into? And it is that. Like, when I run, I don't listen to music. I listen to frequencies. I listen to sounds. I listen to meditation music. But healing is important, bro, because if we don't heal, we'll continue to experience a hurt world and a hurt generation. You cannot blame this generation because of this generation. Who's the leaders of this generation? Who's the fathers and mothers of this generation? We talk about these kids, all these kids. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, where did the kids get the example from? You know, I'm on 707. You probably seen the thing with Cam Newton. Bro, I, I almost had an issue in Houston. Like, literally, like, almost like Cam, three dudes. And you see these kids, man, like, kid said me. You know what I mean? A kid. You know what I mean? Parents fighting. You know, coaches fighting. Coaches hot bobbing the kids for fighting. And we wonder why this world is like this. We have no leaders, bro. And then the leaders we do have, you know what we do to them, Marcus? We tear them down. We tear them down for not being perfect. We tear them down. And these leaders are like, man, I ain't about to be no leader. I ain't about to get tore down for that. And we tear down the people who actually care. We try to pick them apart. And so the reason we need to heal is because we need to experience a better generation. Like, I look at my girls. You know, you got your boys. I look at even Tristan. And I'm like, man, I'm doing this for them. This is a generational change, generational wealth, generational health. When I say wealth, I'm not talking about finances. I'm talking about being wealthy in the soul, being wealthy in the mind. That's what I want for these kids. So my daughters, you know what they tell me all the time? Hey, dad, I'm protecting my peace. Like Maya, she go ham with it. Like I went in her room, dad, uh, I'm protecting my peace, <laughs> you know? But they understanding these principles. And so that's why it's important. I can't give them those principles in my mind healing. Right? If I'm a hurt daddy, how can I... Be the father that my kids need them to be. And so that's why it's important because it's bigger than you. And when you understand that, you'll stay loyal to the, to the things you need to stay loyal to and the commitments that you need to do in order to make the change you want to see. <laughs> wow, man. If you protect your peace, you heal yourself. If you heal yourself, you heal your spouse, your significant other. You heal your children. If you heal your spouse and your children, you heal your home. If you heal your home, you can start to heal your neighborhood, your community, your city. You can heal the world. And that's why I feel like this is so important and why I'm going to be pushing it to everybody because I know. I'm not pushing this because for no other reason than because I know the power it has. I know what your words have done for me personally. All the principles that you teach about showing up, about putting it out there. Like we had one conversation and you said, I was like, man, what should I do with this social media stuff content? You said, shoot away. You got a heart. You got a passion. Just shoot and post, shoot and post and fall in love with the process and progression, not the outcome. The outcome ain't none of my business. Where it lands and who it gets to, that's not my business. My part and your part starts with you protecting your peace, you protecting yourself, your heart and your mind from the things that are coming to steal, kill and destroy you, which is thus perpetuating this cycle of brokenness we see in the world. So as we get ready to land the plane, one of the things, uh, one of my favorite people, another one of my mentors, Nipsey Hussle, I'm doing something dope, by the way. I, I can't wait to show it to you. I'm doing something real dope. But uh <laughs> One of my other mentors, Nipsey Hussle, often talked about hope and he talked about representing hope to the hopeless. And he's like, until you do that, we ain't having that conversation. And you are somebody who definitely represents hope to the hopeless everywhere you go, whether it be kids. I've seen you do it, bro. Like, y'all don't even understand. Like, this is real. This ain't a game. I'm sitting in Chick-fil-A eating with this man and there's a lady like trembling so bad because she just wants to say hello. And I tell this all the time, bro, You it speaks to me because she had her camera open and she came up. She told you you changed her life. She told you how the year, the date, and she knew it all. And you just were kind. You spoke to her and you listened to her and she was finna walk away. And you said, hey, let's get a picture because you saw it. You saw it. That's hope that that's the epitome of who you are as a human. 
That's why I'm a proponent of this, because this is real. A lot of people out here is selling you pipe dreams, fake. They ain't even write the books. AI writing the books for them. <laughs> uh, we ain't going to go down that train. This is real. But when you talk about hope, man, I want you to think about your own hope. And the question I have for you is wh what would be your hope for this book? And yeah, what's your hope for the book and what it does for the people? My hope would be that this book helps you understand and know that peace is the greatest gift that God has given us. And my hope is that you prioritize peace at the head of your life and you operate with peace. You let your pace be guided by peace and you give that peace to people around you. you know, that's my hope. You know, I want you to protect your energy, protect your soul, protect your mind. But most importantly, I want you to experience a life of peace, a life that says, man, no matter what's going on around me, I'm good. No matter how much, how many storms have flooded my life and coming into my life, everything's going to be OK. No matter how many people counted me out. I still got more to my life. That's what I want. I want this to be a book for people to pick up, read, digest, and impact their life in such a way that they know and remember and live by this for the rest of their life, giving up is not an option. That's what I want. In conclusion, man, it's your final thoughts right here. When your story comes to an end, because we talk about this a lot, like we're not here forever. We're here but for a brief moment, and we got to do the best we can to make it matter. When that time comes for you, and the world reflects and starts to gather and tell stories. What do you want it to be said of who you are as a human, who you were as a man, and what you accomplished in the world? You know, I think about this often. And the thing I always go to, that I even want written on my tombstone, Trent was just a man who cared to help people who cared to help people find their greatest version of themselves, who help, who cared to help people overcome their biggest challenges and struggles. Trent just cared. And if that's said about me at my eulogy, people who talk about me and I'm remembered by that, then I can go out with a fist pump like, yeah, because that's what I live for and that's what I do it for. Uh, the legend himself, man. The legend himself. Man, tell them where to find you if they've been living under a rock or how they can get the book. I'm, of course, telling the link, but just throw it out there. Yeah, TrentShelton.com. you can find the book on there. Um, about, it depends when you listen to this episode. We might still have some cool freebies. Um, Amazon, easiest place. And at Trent Shelton for all my social stuff, TikTok, uh, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. At Trent Shelton, uh, YouTube, and all of this stuff. And then Trent Shelton Podcast. Uh, or straight up, you know, we kind of we, we went to the Trent Show podcast, but you might still find it on the straight up. But yeah, let's get it. Let's get it, man. Listen, guys, you heard it here. I'm telling you, do yourself a favor. Thank you so much for your time. Y'all make sure you go hit all the links, do all the things and make sure you run. Don't walk and get your copy because you can't.